Now, uh, by my reckoning, Musselburgh's in the East Coast. Is that right, Willie? That's what Sam up in Edinburgh, pal. That's Sam. Eh? That's Sam, did you say? I'm in Edinburgh. Oh, you're in Edinburgh. Congratulations. Aye. Are you enjoying it? Oh, I definitely do. It's a good city. How are you finding it with the electric light and everything? Oh, I was going to take you to task. You were talking to uh, Dominic Diamond earlier tonight, with, and you were saying about the SNP joining the Tories. Yes, I'm just going to be talking about that later tonight. Ah, uh, well, that's the biggest load of talks I've ever heard. Why, why is that? Because Scott, the, cause the SNP were the Republicans. We want a Republican Scott. No, 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 don't be silly. Listen, let me put you in the picture here, Willie, right? Right, what, come on, then. Let me put you in the picture. What your problem is, the SNP are a minority party, but no, they've... Not. No, but just listen. Don't argue with me. Just listen, and yeah. then you can come back with your point, right? The, S the SNP have one power, right? But they don't have a majority. They're a minority party. So don't know they're not. That's a fact, OK? Now, the thing is, the Labour aren't going to help them, and neither are the Lib Dems, OK? Because they don't like them. So, the only party that's going to help them to get something through is the Tories. Now, uh, there was a half-witted idiot saying he didn't think the Tories would get in quickly in Scotland again, right? Now, I think what we need to do is say, well, look, let's have one party, which is the Scottish National Conservative Party, obviously under the Crown, but you have devolved power, but Conservative nationalism. No, well, we've already got the ball, Scotty. No, 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 you haven't, you see. Well, you've you got, know, well, you've got some things are devolved, but very much, is very much still a country run from Westminster. Uh, well, I've given you your, you know, room to say what you've got to say. Yeah, well, you, say, you say your bit now, Willie, and see how it compares with my wisdom. But I kick off. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'll be quite happy with our... And I'll tell you, the way things are going now in Scotland, the people are sick of Labour because you're a sleaze and thieving. Yes, good. The Tories, we were wiped out before. The Tories yeah, are but only, only before they're coming back. And remember, the Tories yeah, are going to be the main party in power shortly. Scotty, Scotty, can I say something to you, my friend? Of course you can, my friend. The Tories will never get back into power in no, Scotland. No, that's your, that's your wishful thinking. The Tories will come flying back. The only reason the Tories because they're very, very popular in the Scotland. World. Listen, the only reason the Tories go in is because on a... How can I say? They had, to, they had some Tories there. They felt sympathy for, sympathy for the Tory party. That's all. Yeah, they, but they, that that'll all come fleeing back now because oh, oh never come back in Scotland. Yeah, no, it'll come back out of necessity because otherwise the nationalists are going nowhere because no, late Labour's a spent listen, force. Listen, Salmon run, Salmon's running rings rings at the moment. Well, oh, I know just as a politician, but that's nothing to do with actual power. That's just to do with enjoying himself. It's honeymoon period. He's a no, first class. He's a first class politician, and he's running rings round Gordon Brown. No problem, right? Runs rings, rings round the Tories as well. No, not running rings round the Tories. Salmon needs the Tories. Listen, we'll see the next election for the Scottish Parliament. You'll find that that will be that will be split into two parties. Just listen oh, to me okay. here, right? Okay. And your parties will be the Tories and the Nationalists, the Conservative and Unionist Party and the Scottish National Party. So in other words, people will be voting on whether to go independent or to remain as part of the Union. Can I so, say something? Most of, them of course you can. Young generation nowadays want to be independent from... No, 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 no. That's that's yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, what's yeah, yeah. auto suggested to them. They don't want that because they haven't seen the alternative. If you put a strong conservative alternative in Scotland and you said, "Do you want to be part of Britain, see the big picture, or do you want to be floating away on your own and your Todd?" Well, what about, who brought the, the poll tax to Scotland? So let's look at this. No, 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 no. The poll tax was no. national. It was only tried out in Scotland. It was national, oh. and a lot of people well, right the, the Scots. Scots didn't like the poll tax because it was too fair for them. The no, Scots no, liked no. to be divided. No, the, Tories, the English Tories thought we were the Tories. No, no, it wasn't the English Tories. It was I the Tories. It. it was the Nationalists. They're not English Tories. It's the Nationalists. Tory parties and English parties. No, rubbish. Scottish yeah. Conservative and Unionist Party were huge. Do you remember but, Michael Noble? Do you remember George Younger? Well, huge. See, the, absolutely. The Liberal Democrat, the Libs. Absolutely massive. Yeah, well, hey, listen, do, you remember, do you remember Mrs Thatcher coming to the conference in Perth? She actually waved to me, you know. 
She, she was up there. It was huge. Scotland was absolutely awash with conservatism. Alec Douglas Hume, Harold Macmillan, and it will be again. Oh, Anthony, again. Anthony Eden, Good. Malcolm, you know, all, all these people, Malcolm Rifkind, all these people, it'll all be awash with conservatism again. And that That's will be the choice. My friend. my friend, I'm telling you. You trust, Malcolm, you trust you're McClure. Malcolm, kid. You're talking to Malcolm Rifkin. You, you, right? Listen, Edinburgh Pentlands, right? Malcolm, you're Lord, Lord James Douglas right Hamilton, Wester Hills, you see? Fantastic stuff. Oh. Lord, Lord Gould. Can I say, well, let me see what I've got. Yeah, Lord Younger. You know, I mean, tremendous, you know? Great, Good great stuff. Young, Younger Zavala. These were the people that built Scotland. Malcolm, uh, well, Alec, say, Alec you, Douglas you, Hume you, from the Borders. You, Fantastic. It comes to, I know where it comes to, because my, my family's to the borders. Fantastic. Mac Macmillan's from Aaron originally, the publishers, you know, terrific people. Well, you're talking about Malcolm Rifkin. My friend's father was his election agent, Don Mias. Yeah, absolutely. I remember, yes, but but all that aside, the point is that just, the, just, the just, Labour Party is a spent it, force in Scotland no. and independence, right? Would, would, you know, they're going to need backup, and the backup will come from the Tories. No. Can I, well, I'll tell you, so why is Annabel Goldie running to London with the, the Lib Dems, uh, Nicol Stevens, and Wen, Wendy Alexander, down to London? Listen, Well, they're all, they're all going to, to, to say, they, they know that the power is in Westminster, no, and that they're, they're going to see the boss. Eh? Westminster, see through time. This country will go away, break away from the UK. We will be a, a republic like yeah, but, but Yeah, but... No, no, never a republic. This is what you must get out... You, Willie, you must get out the habit of this. If we become an independent Scotland, we will never, ever be republic. We will always, hopefully, be under the crown. No, no, yes, no, no, yes, no, no, yes, no, yes, 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 because the Queen, the Queen that. is the Queen of Great Britain, which covers Scotland, England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Listen, like the Australians, shortly, they'll be going... Never around. mind the Australians, the Australians know what side their bread is buttered on. They've got, they've got a lefty guy in at the moment, just because it's time for that. That'll be short-lived. I'll tell you something. So don't, don't kid yourself, well, Willie. And we're living in a fantasy world. Think you're, that, you're, that, living, you're living in a fantasy world if you think that we're right. heading for a republic. And why would you want a republic anyway? Because they're unstable. Because I'm... No, a republic is not a republic. No, a republic, a republic does not have a proper head of state non-elected. America is a republic. Canada's yeah, but these people are very, these people are very, very envious of us. They wish they had a monarchy. Remember that the Queen, uh, Queen Victoria, eh, not Queen Victoria, um, King King George the First was the King of America. I did you see what the Americans done to you? The Boston Tea Party kicked his way out. Yeah, well, that shouldn't have been allowed. You see, we should have won that War of Independence. And uh, that's what's going to be happening in Scotland. Uh, no, Scotland. that'll not be happening in Scotland because nobody wants it. You're the only one man out of five million who wants it. Uh, one no, no. man. Uh, one man, Willie. And well, I'll tell you, remember the declaration of our broth as long as a few of us remain alive. Listen. Yes, you. there you um, go. There's your history lesson for you now, Willie. People like the Duke of Hamilton and them signed away Scotland's rights uh, down in London and without giving the people the choice. And what's happening now, the people have made a choice. We've got a Scottish Parliament and we've got to rule... Yeah, we've got, a Scot we've got a Scottish yeah. Parliament because that is the home of devolved power. But we will uh, never, ever, ever, the Scots will never give up the crown because we put the crown there in the first place. No, 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 no. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Who was your, who was your first man? Jamie Stewart, a Scot. James, James the Sixth of son. Scotland. Eh? He was this nephew of Elizabeth the First, Mary Queen of Scots' son. Lord yes, Sam there son. you are now. There's a Scottish name for you, Jamie Stewart. So we put it there. Don't you sell that right away. That's our birthright. We well, are the fathers of the of the crown. And that all we are we are the fathers of the union. And we don't want we don't want we people like yourself chipping away at our proper institution. Well, we're doing it now. We've got a parliament, haven't we? Well, and we've got a parliament. We need to. That parliament should open with "God save the Queen" and should close with "God save the Queen." Oh no 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 oh, no! Yes yes yes, Willie. And I'll tell you, unless it does that, your nationals will be history very very quickly. Wait 
to the Lion Rampant's final over. The Scott. Lion Rampant is there because the Lion Rampant, the Lion and the Unicorn fighting. No, the lion, what are the lion. lion and the Unicorn fighting for? The Lion. They're fighting for the crown. I just got support for the coup for long enough. There you are, not nearly long enough. Another 2,000 years you and I can have this discussion, Willie. Then no, we listen. might look at something different. Listen, the, the, the tide is moving now. No, and the tide is moving. That is fine. Devolve power, fine, but under the crown. You split, you can split the parliaments, but you never ever split the crown. The Republic will come, my friend. No, that would be the worst thing that happened to this country, because I'll tell you, if the Republic comes, there will be one person living in this country, and that's you. Well, I'll you'll be, be on your, to do that. You'll be on your Todd, Willie, and you'll starve to death, a lonely old man, because you voted the wrong way. Oh, I voted the right way, and I'll always vote the right way. You got it wrong, Willie. There you go, and you're still getting it wrong. And you listen to McClue, because McClue knows best. McClue. Listen, McClue. McClue knows best. See people, see people like yourself. Yes, like you. always remember, McClue right. knows best. Look, let me see what I'm going to say. Go on, Willie. You run between the ears, and actually had on the ears. If the two neurons that collide, and maybe I get a sparky intelligence from them. What's that? If your two neurons inside your head, no hope. Oh, <laughs> don't yeah. try that nonsense, Willie. Remember, I've taught you all you know. Oh, you've never taught me anything. I've taught friend. you all you know. Tonight has been a learning curve for you, no. and you're going away a wiser man than you were ten minutes ago. Oh, no, no, I'm fine. Listen, I'm a lot wiser than you, my friend. Ah, that'll be the day. Why are you coming out with tripe if you're wise? Wise men do not talk gobbledygook like you've talked tonight. Listen, my crew, you've never had seen your nose. You can no scratch your nose for ten years because your, your head's been up your ass for so long. Aye, oh, there you go. You're, you're lowering yourself to insults now because you know I've got you on the ropes, laddie. Backside. You're going to put your head up your backside. You've lost your argument, laddie. You're having to resort to insults now because I've spoken the truth and you've told oh. a lie. No, listen. listen. You've told a lie, will you? I'm not told a lie, you're... you're a shocker. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm not ashamed of my... I'm a good Scot. No, you're not a good Scot. You're a you're traitor to Scotland. McClure, you're you're a treason happy. to the Crown. You've been quite happy to give it out, but you can't take it, Ah, you can't take it, because I've spoken the truth, and no, you don't, don't like don't the truth. The truth hurts, Willie, and there you are. And I'm not the only one. There's another five million people will back me. I back you. They'll be putting you out of the border. Aye, that'll be the day. That'll be the day. They'll be they'll be voting me in in oh. charge of a conservative nationalist government under the crown. Never happened. And, happen, and the first thing we'll do is have you shipped to the Tower of London and left good. there. Good. Good. Yes, yeah, you enjoy yourself down there. And when the ravens leave, that's it. Your time's up, Willie. Your bones will be picked by the ravens, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> you really do make me laugh. I thought people like you were all the way now. No. <laughs> I no. thought you all got transported to Australia. Listen, you'll be stuck aside the rest of Edinburgh. Listen, if you're, so, if you're so keen in a republic, why are you not living in Australia? Why are you not living in Russia? I'm a Scot. I was born. Ah, you're a Scot. You're a shocker. You, you should be ashamed to call yourself a Scotsman. No way, you I bet Scott. you've got a big pair of fluffy knickers under your kilt. <laughs> 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 That's the level you're at, my friend. Welcome to the house of Dinky Doo. Dinky Doo. The Scotty McClue Madhouse. 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 Today is, of course, St Andrew's Day, and with me to discuss this special day for Scotland is broadcaster Scotty McClue. How are you today, Scotty, and how is Scotland? Oh, very well, Stacey. A very, very snowy Scotland this morning, of course. I've just arrived for work about three hours late. Terrific deep snow, about two feet of it in some occasions, and of course it's uh, holding up the whole of central Scotland. But uh, it's uh, a more important day because it's the feast day of St Andrew, the 30th of November, the patron saint of Scotland, and uh, this is Scotland's official national day when we fly our national flag, the Saltire, with the blue background and the white cross. 
Now, um, I don't know if you know about the background or your listeners know about the background to the flag, but uh, it was actually a legend about a battle in Athol Stainford in East Lothian in the east of Scotland, or Ail Stainford, and the night before the battle, King Ingus vowed that uh, if he was granted victory, he would appoint St Andrew as the patron saint of Scotland, and the legend states that he actually engaged in prayer on the eve of the battle, and in the morning they looked up and there was the blue sky with a white diagonal cross. And uh, that was the start of the Saltar flag. And, of course, St. Andrew's diagonal cross was because St. Andrew wanted to be crucified on that cross rather than be crucified on the same cross as Jesus Christ, his Lord and Master. So it's essentially a Christian festival, St. Andrew's Day. And St. Andrew became the patron saint of Scotland around the middle of the 10th century, about 950 AD. But he's also the patron saint of many other parts of the world as well. St. Andrew is well known in the Ukraine, in Russia and Romania, Atlas in Greece, Amalfi, Italy, and also in Portugal. So he's managed to get himself about, and the St. Andrew's flags can be seen in the flag, the blue in the flag of Australia, New Zealand, and Nova Scotia. So the Saltire Cross, and of course, Scotland has got a national party in government at the moment. We have our own assembly in Scotland, and our government is the Scottish National Party. They are in power at the moment. Of course, they are very keen that the Saltire flag finds its feet. But uh, from going, essentially from going from a Christian festival, St. Andrew's Day is a day of great celebration. Lots of dancing, lots of singing, lots of evenings out, lots of eating, of course, things that the Scots do terribly well. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there were many, many Scots, Stacey, or Scots descendants in the Falkland Islands and the South Atlantic. Yeah, no, there's uh, quite a few Scots uh, down here, and um, I'm I'm sure you'd encourage them to, to celebrate today as well. Yes, absolutely. The uh, celebration of music is very much with the fiddle and the bagpipe, but the fiddle, the violin, is the original instrument of Scotland going back to the 15th century. And uh, not long after um, Andrew's bones were taken to St Andrews. Of course, St Andrews in the east coast of Scotland where Prince William uh, went to university recently uh, and, of course, engaged to Kate Middleton now. That's the big news over in this part of the world. In fact, the big news throughout the world. But a celebration of St Andrew. St Andrews is also the home of golf, which uh, the saint himself wouldn't play because that didn't come in until the 1400s. But uh, there will be dancing, there will be singing, Scottish music, and, of course, the food. Um, normally reserved for Bums Night, uh, the, the birth of uh, Rabbi Bums on the 25th of January, uh, but uh, there's always good food eaten in St Andrew's Night, good warming food, Scotch broth, that may be haggis, neeps and tatties with the potatoes and the turnips there, but anything essentially that is an excuse to have a little bit of whiskey, so there'll be a drop of single and uh, um, other blended whiskies being taken tonight as well in celebration. That relaxes people and um, it brings in the uh, the fertility rites. And of course, if you go right back to the history, you'll find that uh, in parts of Germany, Austria, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland and Romania, there are still superstitions that believe that the night before St. Andrew's Day, St. Andrew's Eve, is especially suitable for magic that reveals a young woman's future husband or that binds her future husband to her. So all in all, a day for celebration, Stacey. Yes, so the the bad weather over there isn't dampening people's spirits? Well, it is obviously very frightening, but I really think that it would be very, very unfair of me to lecture the good people of the Falkland Islands about weather systems. (laughs) So I don't think we can be seen as moaners and whingers. I think we should be seen as people who have a humility, hopefully, in the way that St. Andrew had his humility, not wishing to be crucified on a cross similar to his Lord and Master. Yeah, well, it's a very sunny uh, summer's day here, so uh, maybe that'll make you a bit jealous over there. <laughs> oh, you lucky things, yes. I'm absolutely green with envy now. I'm heading for the Falkland Islands as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thanks a lot for um, talking to me today, Scotty, about, uh, about St Andrew's Day. Stacey, lovely to talk to you. God bless and um, great wishes to everybody in the Falklands and to all your listeners this morning. Happy breakfast time, I say, and happy St Andrew's Day.